Hey guys, National 115 Day or Zombies Day is right around the corner and that's celebrated on January the 15th. And two years ago on this day, Jason Blundell took to Twitter to make videos to celebrate the day and respond to the community's questions. It was quite a surprise to see Jason Blundell on social media because he doesn't do that at all. But during these questions, he actually answered one that gave a hint to an unsolved Easter egg. He said it was one of his favorites and I've got the solve for that for you guys Today, we've waited two years to figure out what he was talking about. I'll show you guys how it was solved and what it is. But first, I'll show you guys the hint that he gave two years ago on Twitter. It's any hint. Good. I'd like to uh, fulfill your expectations. Uh, so my question is, what is your favorite unsolved zombie cipher? Which game map is it from? Thanks in advance. Um, okay, so I would say um, a couple of my favorites are actually in Voyage of Despair. Um, there's actually um, there's actually quite a few. Now, uh, the only thing I would say, because you said you don't want any hints, sure, you know, I don't want to cause a rumble. So he said that it was on Voyage of Despair. It was a cipher and that he didn't want to cause a rumble by giving it away. And all of us knew instantly that rumble meant that it was associated with the vibrations of a controller. So the obvious thing would be to do is to walk around the map and wait for the controller to vibrate that wasn't associated with anything that was going on in the environment. And I'm kind of surprised, but not surprised that this hasn't been solved yet. The way that you do this is that you don't just walk around waiting for vibration. You have to actually activate it. I was surprised to see that this was a pretty tough Easter egg and very involved and time consuming. I got lucky to run into this because I was messing with an Easter egg right next to this one. That Easter egg seems to be cut, but I'll show you guys what this one is all about. So you need to get inside the ship and go to the third class berths. And when you go down this hall right here, you can look over and look down further into the ship. And this is where the Easter egg is. So yes, as he hinted, this is an Easter egg that involves the vibration of the controller and sensing that and walking around and feeling those vibrations. All the vibrations are felt on this metal grate and you have to activate it by slamming the hammer on it. Once you do, you're gonna feel these very powerful and very noticeable vibrations that are coming from this grate, depending on which rectangle you're standing on. And this was definitely a fun one to work through and surprising to see what kind of cipher this was. So if you go into theater mode, you can clearly see that there are separate rectangles on this platform and there are 24 total. So there are six across and four down. And what would happen is I would walk on the platform and feel that certain rectangles were vibrating and some of the other ones were not. And then I had noticed that the pattern changed, but I couldn't figure out how it changed. And then I eventually discovered that if you step off of the metal grate, you'll feel a small vibration that indicates that the pattern changed. Then you can step back onto this metal grid and you will feel a different pattern. The first thing I noticed pretty early on is that that bottom row never had any vibration on it. It was just those upper three rows. I started to carefully record the patterns that I was getting. And again, I was just getting them from these 18 rectangles right here. After I'd gotten all the patterns, and I'll show you guys all of that and how I worked it out, I wasn't sure what kind of cipher this was. I was thinking maybe it was binary because there is another binary cipher on this map. But then I was thinking, I don't think they would reuse that type of cipher twice twice on a map. I did a lot of Googling and come to find out this is actually Braille. And what the vibrations are doing is spelling out different letters using the Braille alphabet. After much trial and error, it showed that the starting point of where you start to read the Braille is where they have these newspapers placed on this grate. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but it is very helpful because you do get spun around down here while you're in the dark and you can't really tell which way is which. So I created a chart, printed it all out and recorded all of the patterns. And here's an example of one of my charts. This was the very first pattern that I was able to record. I slowly walked over the entire platform and if I felt a vibration on one of the rectangles, I would put an X. Once I got done recording all of the vibrations for this pattern, I would step off the platform, feel that small vibration, get back on it, and get a totally new pattern. And I'll show you guys how this works out. So on the very left, that's our first letter, and you can see how the X's line up with the Braille letter R. Then the next six rectangles line up with the Braille letter U. Then the final letter for this pattern is on the far right, and that lines up with the Braille letter N. So the very first pattern is giving us the word run. 
So again, I had to repeat this several times. I didn't know how long this was going to go, but it went for a pretty long time and it took about 30 minutes to get every pattern. Here are all of the charts that I recorded and it turned out that there were 22 separate patterns. The way that I know that it ended is that for the last pattern, I stepped off of the platform and it vibrated. And then when I stepped back onto the platform, none of the rectangles were vibrating. So it was finished at that point. So each pattern gave up to three letters and sometimes it would give just two letters and a space and when it's all laid out it says running from your former life does not erase the sins of your past. I feel like I did a pretty good job of recording the vibrations. I double checked them twice and then it spelled these words out. There was no misspell so I feel like yeah this is definitely the solve and I guess this is just giving us more backstory to Bruno and some of the information that we learned about him from this map. There was a lot of ciphers that involved him, but it's a pretty vague cipher, but it was definitely fun to do. So yeah, almost exactly two years later, we're getting to find out what Jason was hinting at, but I hope you guys enjoyed this and we'll see you next video.